this morning is called Victory Song. And so the, the question I want to ask you this morning, what is your victory song? Do you have a victory song? Um, for many of us, this has been a very tiring and trying time. For us, as we go through another winter and we are in lockdown, we may be feeling discouraged and disheartened. Our faith has been tested and some may be fearful of the present and the future. This morning, I want to encourage you to take heart. Many Christians have been through difficulties. Uh, maybe they haven't been through the coronavirus, but they've definitely been through difficulties, uh, persecutions. Uh, they've been through other plagues and um, God has brought them through. He's been faithful to many, many generations and he will be faithful until the end. The good news in the end is that we win. Today I want to share some principles that we can apply that will help us experience victory in these trying times. When the Israelites left Egypt and got to the Red Sea, they were fearful because they had the Red Sea before them. There was no way to turn back and they had the Egyptian army coming behind them. And uh, God spoke to Moses and he said, lift up your rod. And as he lifted up his rod, the Red Sea parted and the Israelites traveled over the Red Sea in uh, peace. They could carry, and there were many, very many of them. But as the Egyptian army tried to chase after them, God closed that same uh, sea upon that uh, army and even today there are artifacts that have been found that prove that this uh, really happened although we do believe it but it's good that um, there are artifacts that prove God's word um, even in the midst of calamity God brought them through he's a faithful God keeping his promises in the same way today we know that he Will bring us through. In Exodus 15, we see the song of Moses. It's a victory song. Then Moses and the children of Israel sang the song to the Lord and spoke, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My father's God, and I will exalt him. When they triumphed over the enemy, the Egyptians, the um, Israelites sang a victory song. Even Miriam and the other woman picked up their tambourines and danced. And today we can lift up our voices and sing a song of victory it's a song of rejoicing in 1 peter 1 verse 6 and 7 it says this in this you greatly rejoice though now for a little while if need be you have been grieved by various trials that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire may be found to praise and honor and glory at the revelation of jesus christ whom, having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Where would we be without our salvation? Where would we be without our salvation? And we are secured, as children of God, we are secured a place in eternity. Our world that we live in is very temporal, but eternity is forever. And so if we are saved, then we know that God will bring us through. We have great reason to greatly rejoice because we have an inheritance that is incorruptible, undefiled, and does not fade away. An earthly inheritance is easily spent and dwindles away but our heavenly inheritance is eternal. The realities of life on earth 
is that we do go through trials and hardships. But these, let them help them to strengthen our faith. I've been through many situations uh, in my life. And as I've trusted and held on to the Lord, He is the one that has uh, brought me through. This faith is valuable. It's much more precious than gold. It is to the praise and the honor of the Lord Jesus Christ who paid the price for our redemption and assures us of our entrance into heaven. Jesus paid a costly price so that we can enter the kingdom of God. Even though we have not seen Jesus with our natural eyes or our spiritual eyes, we believe in him and we rejoice with inexpressible joy because we know that we have received forgiveness and the salvation of our souls. The time that we are on earth is a mere fraction of what eternity will be to us. It's an anthem of faith. We are all familiar with the song, I Raise a Hallelujah. The song was sung as a prayer. Joel and Janine Taylor took their two-year-old Jackson to the hospital for what they thought was a normal child sickness, not realizing that his kidneys were shutting down because of an E. coli virus attacking his organs. He had to undergo blood transfusions and even go on dialysis. While suffering from seizures and respiratory issues as well. Soon afterwards, their four-year-old Eddie was diagnosed with the same infection. Jackson was gravely sick. The doctors didn't think that he uh, would make it through the night. Many people were praying for this little boy. And the houses dove into prayer um, over Jackson. And as they started to pray, they started to sing. And the song came out. It was sung as a victory song. It became an anthem for the tailors through the rest of the battle over Jackson's life. Make, making worship their weapon, the song was sung over Jackson and Eddie. And um, we know that they won that victory. And the uh, two children uh, are well. I may not know what you are struggling with. But this I know, that there is victory for those who believe and trust in Jesus. We need to keep our eyes focused on him and look forward to the day when we gather with the multitudes to worship him. There we will sing, King of kings and Lord of lords, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus leads us in victory. In John 16 and verse 33 it says this, these things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Even in the midst of persecution and tribulation, there's joyful peace in the certainty of Christ's victory. The fact that he overcome, overcame means that we as his children overcome as well and so i ask you again what is your victory song and i want you to type uh, in the comments type what is your victory song each of us have different songs and uh, we just sang one this morning i raise a hallelujah but perhaps you have a, another song i know that uh, when uh, pastor keith and i were waiting for our um covid results after we had our tests and we were living isolated from each other the Lord gave me a song, and those songs, uh, I think it was three or four nights when we were separated, that um, those songs uh, continued in my spirit and uh, continued to encourage me yeah. and lift me up. And so uh, when we got our negative results, it was a great thing for us because I knew that the Lord had been with us and he had protected us from getting um, the virus. The victory song is for every generation. In Psalm 145 verse 4 it says this, One generation shall praise your works to another 
and shall declare your mighty acts. That's in the New King James. But in the New Living Translation, it says this, Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. While we are here on earth, we should be sharing the good news with others, sharing the good news of Christ. The old should be sharing with the young. The young should be sharing with the old. We should be building one another up and urging and encouraging each other not to lose heart, Amen. but continue on the path Amen. of righteousness. I know in Proverbs it says, iron sharpens iron. And so we should be like that, encouraging each other to worship God and not lose faith, even in these difficult song times. This song is even sung in heaven. One day in heaven, we will all worship in the throne room and behold Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Father God. Can you imagine what that would be like? Uh, for me, I can just see a God the Father sitting on the throne, Jesus sitting at his right hand. Uh, the music would be playing, um, the brightness of the uh, of the temp the temple not the temple the shekinah. the shekinah glory of god would be all around we would uh, be in his presence and we would be kneeling down and worshiping him and isn't that something to look forward to and uh, uh, there will be no uh, the bible says that there will be no sorrow there will be no tears and so i look forward to going to be uh, with my father in heaven in uh, revelation uh, 13 uh, 15 verse 3 to 4 it says this they sing the song of moses the servant of god and the song of the lamb saying great and marvelous are your works lord god almighty just and true are your ways o king of the saints who shall not fear you o lord and glorify your name for you alone are holy, for all nations shall come and worship before you, for your judgments have been manifested. When we worship, we will worship in unison. We will be unaware of time uh, because eternity has no time. On earth, there's, there's days and nights and seasons. And um, but in on, in heaven there will be no day and there will be no night. Uh, we will not be confined to time. Uh, and isn't that wonderful? Love yesterday when uh, we gathered together um, as a leadership to pray for the church. This is one of the words that came out. Um, one of the prophetic words that there's times and seasons, uh, and that this is a time that we are going through are we going to allow the devil to silence our song of victory as we go through the trials of life or are we going to raise our hallelujahs with the generations of all ages and proclaim the victory that is ours in jesus christ our lord i want you to tap now Victory is my song. We want to sing a song of victory. We are overcomers. In Revelation 12 verse 11, it says this, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives unto death. Be bold and share the goodness of God. What he has done for you personally, no one can deny your personal testimony. You can show, share how the Lord has brought you through, healed you, kept you. There's no better time to do it than now. Post it on your Facebook page. Share it with your friends and neighbors. Now is the time to do it before it's too late. Imagine if the trumpet has to sound and uh, we have not shared um, what God has done with us. That may be a soul that is lost and uh, go into eternity, uh, not with Christ.
Do you remember our old school war cries? I remember it. We used to stand on those grandstands and sing it. V-I-C, 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 victory is our cry. And so as Christians, we should be crying that too. V-I-C, 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 T-O-I, victory, victory is our cry. As we enter into God's presence, we should be declaring that victory over our personal lives, over our families' lives, over our church's lives, over our country's lives, over the world's lives. V-I-C, Jesus has won the victory. He wears the victor's crown. He's the only one that is worthy of all praise and all adoration. And he has done so much for us. Why can we not do something for him? Why can we not share the goodness of God um, and we declare the victory is ours and the battle is the Lord's. Victory, victory is our cry. In conclusion, let's recap on what we have spoken about today. We have a victory song. Just as God overcame the Egyptians, so he will overcome your situations. Sing a victory song to him, proclaiming his faithfulness over you it's a song of rejoicing we've got a lot to be rejoicing about it's our anthem of faith he is the one that carries us through in difficult circumstances jesus leads us in victory he has not left us alone he has given us his uh, ho the holy spirit to help us and lead us and guide us and direct us all generations are to worship him we need to worship god in unison our voice giving praise and worship to God here on earth and longing to worship in the throne room in heaven. Overcome. Tell others what he has done for you about his goodness and his plan of redemption for them. When the end of ages come and we are all in heaven, there's going to be a great victory shout as the Lord God, the creator of heaven and earth, brings us together. Uh, we're going now, I want you to stand up. And we are going to sing a victory song. Let's stand and proclaim the victory over your situation, over your lives, over our country, over this coronavirus. And trust the Lord to bring us through as we lift him up and as we glorify his name so that we exalt him um, and lift him up and that you uh, will walk in victory. God, Jesus didn't want us to be walking and be downtrodden. He wants us to uh, walk in victory and to have victorious lives, walking in faith, sharing in faith, overcoming um, everything the word says he we he we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony Amen. and i've got just one more scripture that i want to share just um before uh, pastor keith comes and leads us in that uh, worship song it comes from luke 18 and verse 8. um i'm just going to read i'll read the whole verse i tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, the less. When the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? And so that's my encouragement for us today. That we, when Jesus comes, that we who serve him will still have faith. And that we would have not been uh, discouraged by circumstances. But that we would still have faith in him. And that we would rise up and be that mighty army that he planned for us. Amen. Are you ready? We'll sing our raise a hallelujah again. But this morning, let us sing it better than we ever sang it before with with more passion with more conviction with more um, faith than ever before stand i trust that you are standing not just seated let's sing it together i raise a hallelujah
I raise a hallelujah. over our circumstances. We raise our hallelujah over this virus called COVID. 
we raise a hallelujah over death and loss because we know we have a hope and a future. We raise a hallelujah over our financial circumstances. We raise a hallelujah over our family circumstances. We raise a hallelujah over our marriages. We raise a hallelujah over our walk with you. We choose to open our mouths and start to, the cry, to declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we praise you and we trust you and you're worthy to be praised. You're high and lifted up. We praise you this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name. I'm just going to ask Pastor Cheryl if she will pray for those. If you are battling to praise the Lord right now, you've been struggling with a circumstance and you're saying, I'm just battling. I'm, I want to praise, but I'm struggling. I'm going to ask Pastor Cheryl, in line with the message that she just preached, to pray over your life. Hmm. Father, we just uh, lift up uh, those who are battling to raise a hallelujah, those who are battling to sing uh, in the midst of the storm. And Lord, we ask you, Holy Spirit, that you would Amen. come and enthuse them, uh, that you would illuminate yourself to, um, to them, and that, Lord, that you would lift them up out of this um, slump that they are in that Lord that you would show them that the, the battle is yours and yes, that because yes. of that you have overcome and so therefore we have overcome and we pray this in your mighty name Jesus hallelujah just before we close um, something came to mind I've preached about this before um, but in Psalm 49, uh, 149, it says this, verse 6, Let the high praises of God be in their mouth, and a two-edged sword in our hand. If you do not think your praises are a weapon, here is where it stands in the Bible. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth, and a two-edged sword in their hand, to execute vengeance on the nations and the punishments to the people, to bind their kings in chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on him the written judgment, this honor, have all of his saints praise the Lord. As we praise the Lord, judgment is exercised out against the enemy. We raise a weapon when we raise a hallelujah. So uh, I just want to thank Pastor Cheryl for that message. I trust you've been encouraged this morning. And I trust that as you go into this week, you are going to be raising your hallelujah. You are going to be singing a victory song. Go and read the Song of Moses. It's, you'll find it in the book of Exodus and you'll, go and find, you'll find it in Revelation. It's at the beginning 